The best in poker news, entertainment, and more. This is the Mark Oak Show. All right, everybody. How are we doing today? Good to see you. Hey, for those of you who are watching on Project All In last night, yeah, I, I might as well have just stayed overnight. I should have just got hammered, crashed out on one of these poker tables, maybe up in the poker ring. But man, what a night that was last night on Project All In. Thanks to Christina for having me on board with that. Now it's my show. Woo! Of course, we're live here at Quan International. And make sure you go check out ProjectAllIn.com and QuanInternational.com for uh, some great, great poker broadcasting. Boy, that was some night last night. Of course, the Nevada Poker League gang was up here, had three qualifying sit-and-goes to get on the show, and then just turned it up from there. Two world boxing champions here last night. I'm amazed that I did not get punched. It was stunning. But, hey, thank you for being with us here on the Mark Hoke Show. We, of course, uh, very happy to have you with us back at the old time slot. Thank God. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're happy to have you with us. If you want to get in the tournaments we have coming up, uh, we are going to be giving away a copy of The Mental Game of Poker by Jared Tendler. We've got that fired up for you. So get in our home game. Club ID is 629454. Password is lock it up one or excuse me, Roguewire, pardon me, Roguewire. And that, is, of course, is on PokerStars.net. So join in there. We'll be giving away a copy of that here tonight. So that'll be a lot of fun. Of course, we want to thank all of our great sponsors of the show. And, uh, yeah, it just this list just gets longer and longer every time we turn around. More and more people hopping on board the Mark Hoke Show train. It's been uh, something very special since we've gotten out to Las Vegas. Of course, uh, well, well, we'll save that one for last. Of course, we want to make thank Blind Squirrel Apparel. Go to blindsquirrelapparel.com. You're going to get 20% off with the code HOKE when you check out. So make sure you go to blindsquirrelapparel.com and pick up something over there today. They've got some awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, Arctic Blue Cooling Towels. Make sure you go to arcticblu.com and pick up one of those great Arctic Blue Cooling Towels today. If you work out or do anything physical or you know just need something to keep cool on the golf course whatever make sure you go to arcticblu.com 15 percent off with the code mark hoax show plus you're also going to get free shipping with that that's pretty nice not a bad deal so get over there to arcticblue.com our good friends at three back clothing antonio esfandiari and the whole team <laughs> sorry that if there was a flash that just ran by we'll talk about that in a little bit uh, but make sure you go to 3bet.com, 15% off with the code RADIO. So if you want to dress like Jason Kuhn and all those crazy guys over at 3bet, check out some of the best poker clothing out there as well at 3bet.com. Also, hey, if you haven't gone to DraftKings yet, you can be crowned a fantasy football millionaire. So go to DraftKings.com. I mean, it's one day fantasy football and other events. So get in there and put in the code HOKE. And if you do, and I find out, I'm going to be a very happy camper, trust me. So go to DraftKings.com and sign up today. You get a free 100% deposit bonus plus an entry into a millionaire fantasy football millionaire qualifier on there. Off till poker tables, Brian Knott and the gang doing a great job with their tables. Of course, seen at the World Series of Poker, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, Mid-States Poker Tour, and many homes around the country including mine check it out off tilt poker tables.com final nine comic oh baby the final nine comic if you haven't downloaded this yet and we're gonna have doug hole on he's one of the one of the authors that backs this show but go to final the number nine comic.com the first issue preview is up they'll have the new one up there so i know the ad we didn't get to change the ad yet but it'll be up here in a couple of weeks where you can start seeing nine becoming one with Final Nine Comic. So take a look at that if you wouldn't mind, please. We'd appreciate it. Hey, and double digit covers, I'll tell you what, if you're a sports better at all, you need to get a hold of these guys right now. Go to doubledigitcovers.com, get your free winner. I can tell you that I have bet some of their free winners and moolah, ka ching! Tony Dose and the team in there, they are something else. Check it out, go to doubledigitcovers.com right now. Is it my, now, my wife is off to the side, by the way. My daughter ran behind me. My wife's off to the side. She's playing director over here. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going through my notes. I'm doing my best. Chill out. Oh my God. Jay Farber is over here laughing at me too. Understandably so. It's all good. Uh, check out PokerJoker.com. Go to TeamPokerJoker.com. Get your grin and win today. Some outstanding poker gear, and of course, become a member of Team Poker Joker if you want. Check it out. Grin and win at TeamPokerJoker.com. Of course, Poker News, where the Mark Hoke Show, the KLEV Show, is now on Poker News. We're very proud to have that up there, so make sure you get over there to Poker News. If you're missing episodes live, well, they're on RogueWire, and you can also take a look at it on Poker News. The best in poker news out there, the world's leading poker website, pokernews.com. Speaking of KLAV, check out KLAV, 1230 a.m., the talk of Las Vegas, the home of the Mark Hoke Show, Wednesdays at 11 Pacific. Some interesting programming on there last night. And by the way, they are also replaying our show on Fridays at 9 p.m. So join us there. And, of course, Poker Face News as well. Another outstanding information source. Michael Scherf and the team doing a great job over there as well. So thanks to them for their participation. And now one of our other sponsors, the last one we'll mention, of course, is Doug Hull. Poker plays you can use. And Doug's here. We're going to get to talk to Doug Hull in a little bit. You can get a copy of his book right now. Go to 3BarrelBluff.com, 25% off. You put in the code KLAV. And you're on the board there. And, of course, speaking of that final nine, Jay Farber is here today. We're going to very excited to have one of the November Niners here on the show. And Jay is the underdog, man. I'll tell you what, if you have not followed Jay's story, it is incredible. And we're going to get to talk to Jay Farber in just a little bit. Hung over and all, but he's doing all right. It seems like he's in pretty good shape. So Jay Farber joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show along with Doug Hull. And we do have a grind at segment tonight. Yes, Jamie or Jennifer Shahadi is going to call in, so we'll have Jennifer Shahadi joining us as well. And I'm probably talking a little open face and whatever else we can fire out there. So looking forward to talking to her. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's the big show coming up. News. And, oh, my goodness, we have some news. And, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the read promo we're going to be running there, but that's all right. But uh, you know, brought to you by PokerNews.com. Check this out, guys. We have a couple of new bracelet winners over there in Europe, and the Player of the Year already wrapped up before the main event. Uh, first, let's talk about the winner of the World Series of Poker Europe, and that is Adrian Mateos. Adrian Mateos, the 19-year-old. Yeah, they can You can play when you're 18 over there. And Adrian Mateos knocks off Fabrice Soulier, who I think was a lot of, a sentimental favorite over there. But uh, Mateos comes away after a five-hour heads-up match and takes down the main event, picks up 1 million euros for his efforts. So big congratulations to Adrian Mateos. Uh, knocked off a final table for Fabrice Soulier, Dominic Nitschke, Jerome Huget, Ravi Raghavan making a run over there, and Benny Spindler as well. So, <laughs> sorry, this is crazy going. I got a lot of people all over the place. But Benny Spindler coming up uh, big, making that final table as well. But the other guy that came up big over in Europe, of course, yep, we all knew it, Daniel Negreanu found his way to winning the player of the year race and just for fun won the high roller too he picks up 725,000 euros for winning that picking up another bracelet and wins player of the year as well so the main event will be rendered useless in the point of the uh, player of the year standings but it is Daniel Negreanu smiling all the way to the bank and hanging on there to take down Player of the Year and the High Roller event. But I'm sure we're going to have a lot of conversation over the next few weeks and probably on the show today about the Player of the Year too. Because I'll tell you what, some people are a little fired up that the High Roller ended up being the deciding factor in this and not the main event. So, Daniel, I hope you're ready for some more debate because it's coming. But Daniel Negreanu, a big winner there, taking that one down. And, of course, now we are getting ready to get to the November 9. It is going to be a sensational night over a couple of nights over at the Rio, and we're looking forward to bringing that to you live here on the Mark Hoke Show, along with, of course, ESPN's covering it. Just those, those little guys at ESPN, they're not important. But we'll be there covering the Hall of Fame ceremony and the November 9. Of course, Scotty Wynn and Tom McAvoy being inducted into the Poker Hall of Fame coming up next Sunday. That November 9 right now, 
It is J.C. Tran come going in as your chip leader. Amir Lavat at 29.7. Mark McLaughlin, who had a nice run over in Europe, is at 26.5 million. Jay Farber, our soon-to-be guest here, 25.9. Ryan Reese, that crazy kid, is at 25.8. Savane Loosley at 19.6. Uh, Mikhail Brumelheis at 11.2. Mark Newhouse, 7.3. And David Benefield, who... Well, he was beneficiary. Some interesting play, and I can't wait to talk to Jay about those last two tables. Uh, but Benefield is at six point three million. So those nine guys, one of them is going to walk out with a ton of money. But of course, no. Well, depending on your perspective, what's more important that World Series bracelet? So it's going to be an exciting night here. Uh, nights coming up here at the Rio over the next couple of weeks. And with that said, let's bring in our guest. Jay Farber, we'll swing him in here and get him on the show. And uh, Jay, we'll, we'll even turn your mic on for you, too. And, you know, we're, we're very technically sound around here. Yeah. Just got to talk into that a little bit. But, uh, Jay, congratulations to you. Thank you November 9, it has been uh, – here, I'll slide that a little closer for you. Yeah, you got to – you got to kind of, you know, like uh, – yeah, a little, a little smoochy. You know, don't have to kiss it, but – There we go. There we go. But, yeah, Absolutely. But, Jay, uh, an unreal run for you. And I, I want to go back to that last day seven where it seemed like nobody wanted to go to the final table. I mean, there were blow-ups all over the place, some crazy things going on. Tell us a little bit about what it was like going down to those last few tables and what was really happening in there. Um, it was definitely an interesting dynamic. Uh, you could see, you know, you, you could see that there were guys just uh, sort of playing to win, you know, rather than – taking in that consideration ICM and pay jumps and things like that. So it, it was, uh, I mean, my table was crazy all day. Uh, you know, I, I had a, one of the toughest spots I could possibly be in, sandwiched between, you know, two of the guys who ended up being in the November 9 and the chip, the chip leader at the time. So I didn't get to play very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that, that almost paid off for you. I mean, you got to really sit in that situation. You had to be a little more cautious and sit back considering you know the position you had on the table and what was going on did it ever occur to you to play for that you know to go for the win there or just figured hey you know what I'm going to sit back and let these guys kind of beat each other up for a while um I think once I made day seven I really just wanted to make the November 9 I wanted to make the final table uh so I I sort of took that into consideration the the pay jumps became real uh after you know after day six uh, I think the whole time I was playing before that, it was just, we were just playing poker. You know, whatever happened, mm -hmm. happened. I didn't really have any expectations. And then once day seven hit, I really wanted to get there. So I, I think it definitely weighed a lot on my mind. Uh, I had, you know, I, I had a lot of friends show up. So it was, uh, it was something, you know, there was more pressure, I guess. You know, there, there was no pressure the first few days because there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. And with all my friends being in the audience, I, I wanted, you know, I really wanted to get there for them. So. Yeah, I, I was sitting out in the hallway. And I pretty much knew when you and Ryan were winning hands because <laughs> the, the rail was outstanding. I mean, to be in that situation where, you know, this is something fairly new to you, playing at, at this prestigious of a tournament going this deep, and having that backing behind you had to be just something else to really yeah, get through. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was really cool, you know, having all those people there to support me. But, again, you know, there was definitely pressure. I, I definitely felt the pressure of wanting to make it for them. But it was nice having, you know, all those people in my corner. And in a week's time, it's going to be a, there's going to be a lot more of them. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it's going to be a hell of a night, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a good time. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's going to be a hell of two nights. Yes, you bet. Now, when all these guys were making these crazy pushes and, you know, we, we saw a lot of guys blow chip leads during that those last few hours. Mm -hmm. How shocked were you to see that? Uh, I was pretty shocked at some some of what happened. Uh, poker's a swingy game, though. You know, I, there was a couple things that went that happened that I was definitely surprised by. Uh, but you know, all in all, I mean, I I basically gave away half my chip stack without really playing a hand the first four hours of the day. So, you know, poker's a game of runs and swings. I went from three million to twenty million in one level. Uh, so it, it was, uh, you know, it, anything can happen. The big hands that you hit during that level. Tell everybody a little bit about what was going through your head, what's happened in those those couple of hands that propelled you to the November nine. I didn't. I, I really didn't play a lot of big hands. I had obviously my my all in hand, 
in which I, you know, I got in as a favorite, which I was happy to do. I thought I was coin flipping. So, uh, and then uh, other than that, I pretty much quietly chipped up until the sort of the last pot I won against JC, which was a 14 million chip pot, which was a pretty big one. Uh, and that one was a, a kind of a nerve wracker because uh, could have put me in a really, really tough spot. What is it like going against a legend like J.C. Tran in a situation like that with so many chips on the line? Um, I, I don't really, I don't take the person into account when we're playing poker. You know, everybody's just a person on the felt. Uh, J.C.'s a fantastic player, nothing but respect for him. Uh, it was definitely, I, I, more than anything in that spot, I just didn't want to be put to a really tough decision uh, that could affect me getting into the, you know, into the November 9 and making the final table uh, in a spot where I should always make it. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, that part was nerve wracking. Playing, playing against JC or playing against any of these guys isn't, you know, isn't overwhelming or isn't anything that I, I, I'm affected by. When you got down to about 10 or 11 players and it started becoming real that this could truly happen, what was going through your head at the table? Um, you know, it, it's weird seeing an end in sight. Uh, you know, you're playing poker for seven days straight and all you think of is just poker, 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 and then you see the light at the end of the tunnel and you just want to get there. Uh, I was just excited to, like I said, just to, to win or, you know, to make the final table for my, all my friends that were there more than anything. Try well, not to think about it too much, but, you know, yeah. it, definitely, it definitely weighs on you, you know. So Carlos busts out, which I'm sure had to be a relief to everybody at the table. Yeah, yeah. And then there it is. It's over. You've made it. What was it like for you? It's sort of a surreal experience. It didn't. It definitely didn't sink in for about a week, you know. Uh, and then it, it's it's crazy. I mean, I'm. It's every poker player's dream to be at the final table, you know, playing for the the world championship in the main event. So I get to live every poker player's dream, and you know, now uh, I get to fly across the world to play poker, and it's it's awesome. I you know, it's an incredible feeling. So now you're coming in here fourth in chips. So you're, you're in pretty good shape. Um, did, what have you been doing to prepare for this day coming up next uh, week? We've, uh, I have some very good friends in my corner who are, you know, talking strategy with me. And uh, we've run some simulations and just discussed how we want to approach the final table. Uh, obviously traveled to Europe to play World Series Europe. Played, played a few little tournaments in town just to keep poker in my mind. Uh, but other than that, I've been trying not to think about it too much. I feel like you can, it definitely gets really overwhelming. The more, the more time I sit and think about it, and now that's a week away, it's finally like really hitting, it's, uh, it gets kind of overwhelming. I th think that from what we've seen with some of the guys from number nine, some of them it seems like have over-prepared a little bit. And, you know, you said that you need to get, the, get away for a little bit. And I think that's a good strategy. You know, you need to step back and enjoy the experience a little bit. Now, obviously, you, you want to get that time in and figure out your strategy and, and get on the table a little bit. But still, you know, the opportunity for this is once in a lifetime. you got to enjoy it a little bit, Yeah, right? I definitely enjoy it. Um, I talked with a, a friend of mine who's a professional fighter, and she was discussing, you know, before fights, uh, they train a lot, obviously. You know, they train every day. But she also has time where she decompresses because... Uh, you know, they train, they talk about game plan, they talk about strategy, and then they just let it go, and she gets to go out and do other things. Because she felt like, and a lot of people feel like, the, that if all that's on your mind is, you know, the fight or just poker or whatever, you're not going to play or fight according to the game plan, and you're going to let, you know, it's going to get in your head, and rather than being relaxed, you're going to come in tense. Uh, so I, I plan to come in just relaxed and play poker, and, just, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, a lot of people have been making, uh, bring up the fact that you have very, few tournament winnings posted i mean it's a couple thousand dollars and uh you know you're turning out to be another one of those ultimate underdogs you know maybe a you know somewhat of a, of a chris moneymaker type story here but do you get kind of tired of hearing that uh not at all i i enjoy the role i i feel like poker should be uh, a game that everyone feels they can play uh you know if it was all professionals at that table it would be sort of intimidating to the to the average joe obviously like everyone think you know after chris moneymaker everyone realizes that you know, anyone can do it, but, uh, you know, I like it. I don't mind it. I'm not intimidated by anybody at all at this table, um, and I, I like being sort of the underdog, and I like being the anybody. I don't, I, don't, I don't play a lot of tournament poker. I came as a cash game player, uh, so that's my background, and it's, it, it, you 
you know, I don't I don't mind that I don't have tournament gashes and people can bring it up all they want. It doesn't affect me at all. Now coming up here, what uh, what do you expect when you get out there on the Penn, at the Penn and Teller Theater? I mean, have you have you been running through that in your mind, picturing what's going to happen that night? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, it's tough to get past the entrance. It's just that's that's the the end all be all. Is you know we're going to sit down and poker is going to be poker. Um, anything can happen. It's really going to be. It's impossible to predict what's going to happen. You know we can. We can talk and we can game plan and we can simulate, but until we sit down and play, no one really knows what's going to go on. So I think whoever adapts the best is going to is going to do well. I can only imagine what your rail is going to be like for people that don't know your host here in Las Vegas, you know, local resident. So a great opportunity for people to easily come down there and see you play. How loud is that group going to be? What are, um, what are we thinking? Oh, wow. It's Hey, we got a motorcycle or something going out there too. That was pretty cool. But anyway. It's gonna be quite the show. Uh, it's gonna be a party. I have a, all my friends from nightlife are coming out. I have friends from all across the country flying in uh, just to come and hang out, and it's gonna be a party. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, just tell them to sl- stay slightly sober. Uh, just just a hair, just a little I, bit. I no? don't think no? anyone's planning on being even remotely sober. Fair enough. Yeah. Have hey, fun. Half of my friends are planning planning on getting kicked out so oh really yeah it's gonna be a good time okay well i'll tell you what i might be sitting outside so i'll interview them as they come out yeah you should just just tell them to, just just have them say i'm one of jay farber's fans I'm like oh, all right here <laughs> oh, we go you'll know who they are okay good enough well now you went to world series of poker europe and you, you were telling me before the show that you're now planning on you know going over to australia and, and traveling all the world playing poker that's got to be surreal for you at this point to have that opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I never thought I'd be able to do it. Uh, 888 Poker has been nothing but amazing to me. Uh, they're a great team. They uh, they really embrace the, the poker lifestyle and sort of uh, they're more of a more friends than anything. And we, you know, they're they're super excited to have me on board, and uh, I'm super excited to be a part of the team. And they're willing to let me travel all over with them to go play. So it, it's it's a great opportunity. It's amazing. I never thought I'd. You know, I love to travel, but I never dreamt I'd get to do it and play poker and, you know, do it for free. Not a bad gig. <laughs> yeah, not bad at all. What has surprised you most now that you're getting out on the tournament circuit a little bit more? You get to be around these guys and see what the scene's like. Has anything really caught you off guard that you didn't expect? Mm, not really. I, I've been around a lot of the tournament poker players for a long time, uh, just being in nightlife in Vegas. So and I've played in World Series events before, so it, it's nothing new, um, I guess. It was a culture shock going out, you know, and playing poker in France. They definitely operate a little bit differently out there than uh, we're used to here. But other than that, uh, you know, playing poker with these guys and getting to hang out with them has just been more fun than anything. Well, what what were the big differences over in France that uh, uh, kind of caught you off guard? They pitch a little bit differently, and there's just certain rules that uh, they are accustomed to that we, we aren't. Uh, there's, like, a different string bet rule and... Uh, a couple other things. It, it, it's weird also being at a multi-language table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that has to be interesting. I, yeah. could, I could imagine. Did, did you have to bone up on anything? Anybody, you know? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I, I lived in France for a summer when I was a kid, and I took French all through, you know, junior high and high school and then forgot most of it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I managed to pick it up relatively easily uh, again, and I can understand it. I just couldn't really speak it. But it was nice, you know, if people were talking about hands – or talking about me post to hand, I, I could understand a good bit what, of what they were saying, and I just played it off like I didn't know what they were talking about, you know, so. Ah, very smart. Yeah. Very smart. Well, you know, one controversy that's come up now, you know, of course, Daniel Grande winning player of the year this year, but uh, a lot of people feel like he kind of picked off Asia and picked off Europe, and he did have some, some solid caches in Vegas, mm-hmm. but uh, there's been a, l- a lot of discussion about changing the player of the year's uh, how it's determined and get tweaking that a little bit so the other ones may not be weighted as heavily. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yes and no. I mean, Daniel's definitely, you know, I, I feel like he earned it. I mean, yeah, he won an 80-man sit-and-go essentially in the high roller. Uh, but, you know, he's a consistent, like, top finisher in almost everything he plays in. You know, you look at his history of caches and his bracelets, and, you know, I don't feel like, you know, anybody else this year did much better. I mean, Jeremy Osmus is the only person that I can think of who really deserved to win uh, other than Daniel. You know, Matt Ashton's a great player. Lonnie Harwood also very good. Um, 
you know, it, but at the end of the day, he won. You know, he made it, and people can't, you know, they can argue with it and complain all they want, but uh, just win more tournaments. Place better. There you, you know? go. You know, if you guys have a problem with it, just win. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah, very uh, nice. You know, maybe if they change it up and then change the weight and, you know, I don't know how the, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit, and I don't know how the formula works exactly, but if they change it up and, you know, it, it affects how people, you know, how, how it's, how player of the year ends up, then great. If not, whatever. You'll see. I mean, it's not like anybody who wins it doesn't deserve it. I feel like, you know, Greg Merson last year definitely, you know, Ben Lamb, you know, before that. They all they all played very well and accomplished something that no one, no one else did that year. You know, if it was a tight, it, yeah, it was a tight race this year, but, you know, I feel like Daniel deserved it. Now, who are some of the players that, that are your friends and that you work with? Because I, you know, I know some of the people you're, you're around, but uh, tell everybody about some of the associates that you have in the poker world. Um, you know, Ben Lamb's a very good friend of mine, Chance Corneth, Jesse James Sylvia, you know, uh, Justin Smith. They, they, Dan Shack, there's there's a ton of them. I, I can name drop all day. They're, you know, everyone, a lot of the people I've been fortunate enough to meet out here, uh, either through playing poker or working in nightlife, have are very very accomplished tournament poker players or just poker players in general. And uh, you know, I'm I'm honored and very lucky to have them in my ear, especially you know two guys who've made the final table in the last couple of years and mm-hmm. done very well for themselves. Uh, and getting their firsthand experience and knowledge about this is you know unparalleled. Yeah, and I think that it's – I know Jesse was supporting you heavily out there this year. Having a guy that was just sitting in that seat last year just has to be incredible to have a guy like that around. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, and just like I said, getting to talk with him, and uh, we watched his final table together and going over you know, the plays and what he thought and his mindset throughout the final table and the mistakes he thought he made playing or what he thought he did well was just incredible. It's really awesome to be able to gain that knowledge because no one, without being there, it's really hard to just talk about it. So it's mm-hmm. nice to be able to speak to somebody who's been there. What uh, what advice did Jesse give you in terms of just dealing with the pressure? I mean, maybe not you know not necessarily the strategy side, but the, everything else around it. Um, we didn't really talk about it that much. Uh, I feel like I'm dealing with the pl- pressure just fine. Uh, if anything comes up, you know, there's always a chance to walk away from the table and. I'll have those guys on my rail to be able to speak to them. So very fortunate in that aspect. Now, we're, you're not going to be taking four minutes to decide if you're going to call a pre-flop raise, are you? Uh, no, I'm not okay. a tanker pre-flop Thank you. anywhere. I think the world will appreciate that. They're all rooting for you now, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do agree with the sort of shot clock in, in live poker rule. Uh, there's a lot of people who are – I feel like they, the reason they take so long is because they want to act the exact same – every time and they feel like they're going to give away something by acting too quickly or whatever and it's just unnecessary it slows the game of poker down playing in europe we i had a table where literally you know five of the guys there would take 45 seconds minimum for every action and it's just it's not good for the game you know there's a clock running you know and yeah maybe you're taking pay jumps into consideration but it doesn't take that long to act. You know what you're going to do. Everyone knows what they're going to do, and unless they have a legitimate, you know, huge decision in front of them, so you shouldn't take two minutes to act. ESPN thanks you as well. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long night last year. Just a, just a tad. So now with the being a November Niner, you've had the opportunity to enjoy this a little bit. What have been the biggest changes in your life, you know, other than the traveling that you've gotten to experience? Um... You know, the money's been really nice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, getting the travel's been amazing. The uh, I think the biggest change is sort of the pseudo-celebrity status. Uh, I, you know, it, it was nice being able to, people recognize me on the street now, and, you know, I, I walk into a poker room, people want to take my picture and things like that. And it's, it's kind of cool. At the same time, it's kind of annoying. I, I don't, for one second, take any of this for granted, but I'm usually a pretty private person, despite, you know, all the glitz and glamour of nightlife. So it's really weird uh, to me just having people recognize me. And, you know, I, I was playing blackjack last night, and the guy, this guy, like, triple take walks by me and then stops, and I'm in the middle of losing money and asks me if I made the November 9. And I'm just like, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> thanks. But it's weird. Well, I think it's to your benefit having 
been in this Las Vegas lifestyle and understanding it and understanding what it takes to be a celebrity and being around that a little bit more, I can only imagine that, that you know, it's, it's not a major edge, but it's got to give you a little bit of a feel for what was coming and what is to come here next week. Uh, I don't think you can really prepare for this, you know, unless you have been in the spotlight before. Um, you don't really know, you know, and nobody can really prepare for it. So we get down to the final two. That last card hits and you become the world champion. I mean, have you, have you taken the time to picture that in your head at all? Um, I have a little bit, and uh, it's tough for me. I'm not – I don't like to count chickens before they hatch. You know, I, everybody's asked me what, you know, if I'm planning to do with the money if I win and this and that and the other thing. And I just want to say I'm world champion, and then we'll take it from there. But uh, it's going to be, you know – I can only imagine how ecstatic I'm going to be if, if that happens. Uh, but I don't want to. I don't want to plan on it. You know, there's a lot of poker left to play. Would you sacrifice the money to win the bracelet? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, the the money is really nice. It's a ton of money. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's a ton of money. But I think being able to say you're world champion is just uh, priceless. You know, I I was talking with uh, Tiesto, who's the number one, or been the number one DJ in the world for as long as anybody can remember and you know we, he was talking about how he didn't care about the money when he started out or he still doesn't really care about the money yeah he makes a ton of it but he just wants to put on a good show and you know and that's what I want to do I want to you know I just want to win now I I will imagine though that you've probably thought about one thing that you'd do with the money is there okay. one cool thing that you would do with the money if you win I don't know if it's cool or not. It's pretty spewy, but I'm definitely going to go buy a Ferrari if I win. Oh, there you go. That's a win. And a house. You know, I should probably do that now. Yeah, do the house first. I, I'd probably go. not first. Okay. Man, that'll be nice. It, we'll, we'll have to come with you down when you know when you pick that up. Yeah, hopefully when Penske's still open, I can just walk in and pick the one up off the showroom. Oh, just right with cash, too. Wouldn't that be sexy? Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> well, Jay, I'll tell you what. I, I know a lot of people are out there rooting for you. It is an awesome story. For you to be at this November 9, I know we're going to be watching intently as uh, we see if you can become the world champion. Mm, it's going to be an awesome night, man. Yeah, awesome It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, no matter what happens, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, enjoy the experience. Definitely am. Take it in. Have a great time. We wish you the best, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here, too. Not a problem. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jay Farber, everybody. Look at that. He's, he's <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. You're allowed to have a beer if you want. I know you had a couple last night, but. I'm still over there. I'm testing alcohol for at least another four or five hours. Fair enough. All right. So there you go, guys. Jay Farber joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show. Good guy. Really nice guy. Really nice guy. Well, we're going to hit a commercial. Oh, and my, my wife is like, oh, he's so hunky. Jay, or, I, I think my wife has fallen in love with you, by the way. I don't know what's going on, but. Oh, man, what a day. All right, let's take a break, and we will be right back. Uh, Jennifer Shahadi is going to be coming on, and we've also got Doug Hull, Poker Plays You Can Use, joining us as well, and that tournament. So make sure you get on board. Have a great time with this. We appreciate you being here tonight uh, here on the Mark Hoke Show. So let's take a step back, and we'll be right back. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch on October 21st, 2013. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final9comic.com. Last summer, I was at the World Series of Poker every day and couldn't walk two steps without seeing someone wearing three-bet clothing. It's super comfortable and stylish, and all their stuff looks amazing. The incredible team of pros who wear three-bet hats, hoodies, tees, and more are a who's who in poker. All-time greats like Jonathan Little, Doc Sands, Brian Rask, Jason Kuhn, Scott Clements, Greg Mueller, Ben Tolerine, Jeff Gross, and, of course, Antonio Esfandiari, all proudly wearing the three-bet brand. 
They wear 3-Bet clothing because they know that being comfortable and feeling confident is crucial to winning on and off the tables. 3Bet.com has shipped thousands of orders worldwide, and it's time for you to join the 3-Bet team just like the pros. Go to the number 3BET.com and receive an added bonus of 15% off with the promo code RADIO. Make that right call. Look and feel like a pro at 3Bet.com. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, Blue Rail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the Blue Rail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? Want to be a millionaire? Then see if you can become Fantasy Sports Royalty in the 2013 Fantasy Football Millionaire Grand Final at DraftKings.com. Play for free or in paid contests for real money, plus games last one day, so there's no long-term commitment. Thousands of winners have won over 10 million prizes on DraftKings.com, and now it's your turn to cash in. Go to DraftKings.com right now, enter the promo code HOKE, and get a 100% deposit bonus and a free entry into the Millionaire Grand Final Qualifier. So don't wait. Crown yourself the king of fantasy sports at DraftKings.com. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out, no matter what you're doing, when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold, hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off-tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom-designed table that reflects your style and game. Off-tilt makes it easy to design a truly one-of-a-kind custom poker table that'll give you a home table advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom crafted, furniture quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.offtiltpokertables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262 490 We'll show you why off tilt is the only way to play poker is more fun when you win most poker books are too theoretical they tell you to be more aggressive but give few practical examples poker plays you can use by doug hull edited by ed miller has 49 concepts with multiple clear examples from real live 1 2 through 5 10 games each hand is visually represented explaining which players are vulnerable to these moves. Use discount code KLAV at 3BarrelBluff.com to get 25% off your copy. Paper and ebook available. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. You know, every time John Lindquist that promo rolls off. I just I just get a chill. It is so cool. It's good not hearing me doing all these ads. 
it's a pleasure. And of course, Doug Hall's here. You just heard from uh, heard from him. Poker Please You Can Use. Pick that baby up. It's an awesome book. It really is. Honest to God. 25% off at 3BarrelBluff.com. Just put in the code KLAB and check that out. It is amazing. Got to see Doug do a lecture to the discussion group at Ricardo's here in Las Vegas uh, last week. And, and Doug's lecture was outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I was, I was going to leave early. I'm like, wait, this is pretty good. I mean, not that I expected it was going to be bad or anything. But Doug did a great job. And you know, once again, picked this book up. And I can't wait for the next one. We'll, but we'll talk to Doug about all that stuff coming up down the road a little bit later on. We're going to have Jennifer Shahadi calling in here in just a couple of minutes uh, to join us here on the Mark Hoke Show. Of course, once again, brought to you by some of our great sponsors. I mean, we are loaded up with great companies we're working with. But, of course, i got to make sure we mention on KLAV, 1230 a.m., 11 a.m. on Wednesday, that is Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, Sweet mother of God, he's back on the show. Mike Matisau is going to be joining the fun. He can't say what he normally says to me when he joins me on the show because uh, there's FCC rules against that. So Mike even will not be able to, to tell me to F off right off the bat as he usually does when I interview him. So so Mike Matisau at Bear Bear, yeah, well, yeah, Tim might want to be ready to... Uh, with the old bleeper there. But please join us there. It's going to be an awesome show. And, of course, I'll be up on Poker News. And we'll have this last episode up with Tom McAvoy, uh, jo- who joined us along with Nate and, uh, Nate and Joe, Joe from The Win. Uh, it was a great show. And I promise as soon as I have a second, I'm going to get it re-recorded and get it posted. And the podcasts are coming back very soon, too. We will have those up for you as fast as possible, hopefully this week. But, man, my schedule has been nuts. Let me tell you what I did this week. Oh, Duke of, went down to the Duke of Fremont's great charity event uh, at the Golden Nugget, the Pinstripes and Polka Dots third annual event that was benefiting the Clark County Museum. Really an outstanding show. Uh, had Tom McAvoy down there. J.J. Lou was on board uh, along with, I, and I forgot his name. I believe his name is Mark, the, the bearded dude who goes to, down to the Pawn Star guys to authenticate stuff was at this tournament. I knew I recognized him. I really did. I saw the beard. I saw the top hat. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who is this guy? I know him. I know him. And then finally, it's like, yeah, it's the Pawn Stars guy. But uh, a great night down there. Got to say hi to Marco Valerio, too. So we really enjoyed the show. But uh, but so thanks to the Duke of Fremont. And we're happy he's doing well. Hope the event finished off as successful as it started. And, uh, you know, Check it out. It's going to be a great time uh, with the Duke of Fremont. We will get him on the show soon, I promise. But we need to get this lady on the show. We missed her. It's been a while when we were on a hiatus, Hi. but we're back. It's Jennifer Shahadi of the Grindettes. Hi, Jen. How are you? Hey, I'm great. I'm calling in from St. Louis. I'm here at the beautiful chess club here. Oh, outstanding. So uh, doing a little chess stuff, I would assume, right? Oh, yeah, it's been amazing. There's actually this big uh, fashion and chess exhibit across the street with all these Alexander McQueen pieces. It's It's been, like, basically a fantasy for me. Awesome, yeah. I mean, for those that don't know, Jen, of course, is a master chess player. She's incredible and very highly involved in the chess community. Uh, so what's happening out there with the, with the chess over the past couple of months? I, I know that's been keeping you very busy. Oh, yeah, we had some of the best players in the world here a month ago. Um, Magnus Carlsen was here, and I did commentary for that tournament. It was called the Sinfield Cup. And now I'm here trying to get more women into the game, just like in poker. You know, we try to get more girls into chess because it's extremely male-dominated. Like 80% of the people who play seriously are men. Well, you know, those numbers are picking up in chess, and, you know, we're starting to slowly see it happen in poker as well. What are some of the lessons that, the chess community would be able to teach teach the poker community in terms of getting female involvement. Well, I actually think it's more the other way around that oh. um, that the poker poker world the numbers are a little bit more balanced, and that's partly because um, poker is more glamorous, and that chess has been missing that. That's why in the scholastic level you see more girls playing, but then they almost always drop out in high school and college because you don't see that kind of 
you know, TV or magazine spreads or sponsorships that you see in poker that, you know, girls can really dream about. So that's why I was excited about this this fashion event where you had all these fashion editors come into town and you had, like, the Queen's Gala. So it was a lot more of that kind of thing that I think does help. Maybe it sounds like anti-feminist to say that, but I think that it does help girls to get into it just to see that there's kind of like a prestige beyond um, just winning like your high school championship. You know, but I swear to God, every time I turn around, Jen, there's a fabulous photo of you up somewhere. It's amazing. Boy, I'll tell you, you're going to have to start doing some modeling. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I, after all these years, I just know the right way to pose. And then I'm also like, I usually, um, I, I'm, I'm an editor. I do a lot of website stuff. So uh, all the, uh, the bad photos get trashed. Nice. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Well, well, let's get on the poker side of things a little bit. Uh, first, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out to you. For, let's do the Hall of Fame first. Uh, of course, Scotty Wynn and Tom McAvoy getting in. Uh, your thoughts on those two being the two players selected to get into the Hall of Fame? I, you know, the Hall of Fame. I mean, I guess this year Jennifer Harmon was nominated, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I didn't. I I I think it's uh you know, I, the Hall of Fame, it's just not something that I really think about a lot, to be honest. Oh, fair I mean, enough. I, I, I don't know, like, all these accolades in poker. The, 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 people, the people, the big name players just always just get so much attention in poker. It's always been like that. Like, I don't, I'm more interested in the anonymous online players and their play. Oh, okay. Not completely anonymous, but, like, the people who, uh, the people who don't have, like, the big names. Now, and well, and speaking of some of those, of course, we just had Jay Farber in here from the November nine, and uh, oh yeah, you know, and Jay, uh, you know, one of the great underdog stories in the history of the final table, of the World Series of Poker. Uh, but I know you're familiar with a lot of these players that at this table. Uh, do you have any thoughts on how this thing is going to turn out next week? Well, yeah, I'm so excited about it. I absolutely love watching the November nine. Um, it's really my favorite poker viewing event of the year. I mean, I like the EPT Live, too, but I don't know. There's something about watching every hand and watching it, like, in your living room with friends. It, it's just so special. Uh, but Jay Farber was actually on a panel with me in Vegas at the G2E Gaming Conference. And, uh, yeah, he's great. I'm excited about his chances. He seems like, I don't even know when, when I talked to him, he was very modest, um, despite all, you know, all that he's accomplished. And, uh, he was telling me about how he like is kind of like the amateur like underdog story, but then um, he's been a winning player at five ten for for many years. Yeah. So I I kind of feel like if that's our amateur story now, poker sure has gotten tough, right? Yeah, yeah And no then doubt. David Benefield is uh, obviously uh, a, a, I think he's great for the game. He's like such a classy guy and also an internet kid, but you know, kind of an internet kid who's also really good at talking to the camera, and so. I, I'm, I guess I'm rooting for him. Well, he also set up. He also helped set up that bet where my brother won uh, the fifty thousand dollars chess game against Durr. So I've always oh. had a soft spot in my heart for him. Just the Shahadi family loves. Wow! I, tell me that story. What this is? I wish I did. Wish I'd had Jay here. Go ahead. Let, I want to hear this. Well, Raptor, Raptor, um, David Benefield, the one of the November Niners. Um, I don't think he. I think he has one of the shorter stacks on the table, but um, he's you know one of the one of the greatest players, um, and he's been cashing like mad in all the EPT high rollers. I think he cashed in like eight out of the last nine events he played in, something ridiculous. Yeah. And um, he was the one who, I guess, four or five World Series ago, uh, helped set up a bet with one of his best friends, Durr, Tom Dwan, to uh, play my brother in a work odds chess game. Nice. And I think I talked with you about that before, but basically what happened was. My brother, who's also an international chess master, um, started the game without a rook. And he was playing against Tom Dwan, who's obviously a genius, but um, didn't really know chess very well. And the the idea was that is the fact that the rook, the second most powerful piece in chess, um, the deficit of that is that going to outweigh, you know, my brother's skill. And well, the story the story was told that uh, Greg won quite easily. So, <laughs> A rook is not enough, apparently. He needed to maybe take off his queen. That is the most powerful piece in the board. Wow. That, you know, Tom just finds ways to lose money, doesn't he? He's been, he's yeah, been having a rough I mean, time. I, I guess he makes plenty of money back. I'm, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. 
Yeah. That, now, of course, uh, you know, we have the November 9 coming up here next week, and, uh, you know, it, it is going to be an amazing few days. You know, of course, with Tom McAvoy getting inducted to the Hall of Fame and then the November 9 playing out. Uh, do, do you think Jay is the guy, or do you have another pick? I mean, uh, any any thoughts on who's who you're going to lay it down and see who's going to win this thing? Well, is that more chips again? Can you remind me? Yeah, J.C. Tran's out in front right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I always pick the person with the most. I mean, he's also like such a such a legendary player. But then on top of that, having the most chips is pretty important in poker. I mean, like they're they're about the. I, I know all these players are getting great training, and there's a lot of great players in the table. So it's just hard for me. Um, as it's hard for me not to pick the person who has the uh, has the leading chips because that just means that they have uh, more wiggle room and more chances to uh, get a lucky and still come back and win. Yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing. But I, I will say, I think it's JC's to win or lose. Uh, but you know, he's not. Yeah. Gonna, he's not going to get out of there without a fight. That is for sure. There's a lot of great talent at this table. So we'll see. Uh, of course, Daniel Grani winning Player of the Year over in Europe, and uh, you know, a lot of people have been firing off that Daniel kind of cherry picked going to going to Australia and then going to Europe. You know, he did have some some good run, some deep runs here in Las Vegas as well this year. Uh, but uh, nothing quite uh, like picking up those points in the other uh, two series. Uh, what uh, what have you been hearing and, and your thoughts about uh, the player of the year point, uh, the way the points are given out now? Is Do you think there should be any changes made? I, you know, I, I think I can under, I, I, I understand the criticism that I don't. I really like Daniel, and I think he does a lot of great things for the game. And if he's busting his butt traveling with all these tournaments to win player of the year, then that's, kind of good for the game because he's out there much more than he needs to be. It seems like he's working a lot, honestly. Like, I know Daniel is not as young as a lot of the players in these high rollers. I think he's like 38 or something like that, 36. And he um, just seems like he's workaholic. So I think you got to give him some props for that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, on the other hand, I do, I do kind of like the uh, underdog stories and like the people who are really amazing at poker but can't necessarily play all those high rollers. So I can see both sides. I mean, Matt, like Matt Ashton, who who is such a fantastic mixed game player, would is was was really up there in the race. Yeah, but I, yeah. I don't think you can work, argue with which Daniel's work ethic and his pop, his popularizing of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very interesting case there between what Matt Ashton did at the World Series, but it was four or five final tables, won a bracelet. Daniel winning a high roller over in Europe, the main event over in Australia. You know, and he did have a runner-up finish uh, you know, here uh, where he was beaten by Elliot Lesra. But it is such a contrast in terms of where, you know, the, the, the size of the fields in these events and how that all ended up playing out that, uh, you know, it has a lot of people really paying attention to this now and, uh, you know, it, I have a feeling we're going to see a, may see some tweaks coming up after this year. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that, that could that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. So we shall see. But uh, you know, of course, we'll get into talk to. I hope so, hopefully we'll get to talk to Daniel here pretty soon too. Um, oh great! Yeah. So so what's uh so what else is new with you? What have you been up to? Well, after I went to this G two E conference in Vegas, I actually went to Rosarito, Mexico, for the first time. Um, you know, the, the other girls are out there a lot. Katie, Katie, both Katie's live there, and then Jamie's out there quite frequently. So it was my first chance to see, um, you know, their lives there. And I, I tell you, I did not expect to have such a great time. I, because I'm such a city girl, mm-hmm. I thought that I would be bored by the, I thought I would never see anyone because everybody would be grinding all the time and I'd be a little bit bored, but it was the exact opposite. It was just so relaxing and beautiful and the people were all great and, because of the time zone, after you after people bust from tournaments, they get together and have dinner. It was really wonderful. It is. And I got I ended up getting to play the uh, the W Coop Main, which was the highest by far the highest online tournament I ever ever played in a five K. Oh wow! Congratulations. Um, and I got I got pretty deep, and I didn't end up passing, so I was like I was disappointed. But I came second in another tournament that I played that weekend. So it was. It was a great experience, and I, I wrote a little story about it on uh, the Poker Stars blog. If you want to check it out, it just—I definitely one of the best trips I've had in a very long time. Not not in terms of poker. I mean, I, I did a, I won a little bit, but it wasn't like I crushed or something. It was more just that the combination of being able to play on stars and seeing all those great people and having like a really lot of fun memories in a short time. Mm-hmm. 
No, that is fantastic. I'm glad you, glad you got to finally get down there and enjoy yourself a little bit. It is, I you know, now I'm in Las Vegas, so I can maybe road trip down there sometime. So I, I'm, I'm up for that. It, it just seems like it's a great oh, wow. place to go. So. Yeah, it's great. So and now let me ask you one more question about online poker. And I, I know you, you're doing some other things here, so I don't want to take up too much of your time today. Uh, but we have now Ultimate's opened up. WSOP.com is opened up. What's the word on the street? How's everybody feeling about the Internet situation at this point? I'm still, like, I'm excited that they're coming back, but I think the model is going to be, like, a lot different. You know, it's just going to be a lot smaller to start out, and so it's hard to see how it's going to affect. At the time, it's too early to say whether or not it's going to be enough to, like, support professional players or if it's going to more be for, uh, you know, like a supplement to maybe additionally playing live or additionally leaving the country for the big series. So I'm hoping that when more more of the state to state compacts come about, we might be able to see something where people can just grind online. I, it doesn't seem to me like uh, it's in that direction yet. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I, you know, the compacts have to start getting in there, and you know, obviously the yeah. player base is just not, you know, and, and I think everybody expected that that it wasn't going to be a real big player base. Um, you know, I think one pe- one thing that people suggested to me since. Uh, the, the sites of start up is a lot of the great professional players are tearing the amateurs apart and uh, it's making it a little bit more difficult for them because there's there's really nowhere to hide on these sites because just don't, you don't have the player pool to stay away from some of the big players so it's making it a little more difficult for the new players uh, to really get acclimated without diving into a pool of sharks I think that's definitely been an issue at this point right that, that's an interesting point as well yeah yeah, but so, it's good. That, it's good that we're in that direction. I it's yes. been a few years since Black Friday, so it's here. It's about time. Yes, <laughs> and I and I and I promise to my friends at Ultimate I will be on the site soon. I made my deposit. I'm ready to go. So good, good, good. Yeah. So so when are you getting out here to Vegas? Well, next time I'm out in Vegas, I love Vegas. I'll go there any time. Oh well. But I'm not. I'm not sure. Hopefully before the WSOP, though. Hopefully something will take me there. Like the. The trip to G2E was really last minute, and I was I was so excited just to randomly be in Vegas and not be there for the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird because I associate it with the summer, and suddenly uh, I, I was like, I was actually in the Rio at some point, I think, and it was just so weird to be there when it was not WSOP. I know, isn't it? It is odd, no doubt. Well, I'll tell you what, Jennifer, hey, it just... Uh, remind everybody a little bit about the Grindettes before I let you roll here so they can follow you guys on Twitter and so on. That's right. There's four of us, um, and you can follow us on Twitter at Grindettes.com and we're on Facebook at Grindettes, and we also have a website, um, www.grindettes.com. And I'm Jennifer Shani, so great, great being on the show, Mark. Thank you so much, and congratulations on the new gig and the move to Vegas. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, of course, you know, we do have the Grindettes on our KLAV show as well, which is becoming a quite the success story. I'm very excited about it and humbled by it. It's exciting, and I'm I'm very thrilled to have the Grindettes working with me on it. I wouldn't be here without them. I can tell you that. So, thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for listening. Bye. All right, we'll see you. There you go, everybody. Jennifer Shahadi of the Grindettes on the Mark Hoke Show, always bringing a uh, sunshiny face to this uh, great show here on the Mark Hoke Show on RogueWire.com. All right, let's get another break in, and we come back. It's going to be time for Doug Hull, Poker Plays You Can Use, an amazing book, and we'll get to talk to Doug about that and uh, what's you know going on with Doug as we keep it rolling. So uh, my wife is over here doing weird stuff. I, I don't know. And, and by the way, in case you missed it, my daughter ran in behind Jay Farber twice. I guess she, I guess she found Jay irresistible, too. Whatever. It's all good. All right, let's take a break, and we will be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. Doug Hole coming up. When it comes to custom poker tables, why would you buy something someone else designed and even named for their sales or marketing purposes? The Nighthawk, the Gambler, the Big Slick, the Nuts. Sure, you can customize it if you want, as long as you choose between black, red, or even green cloth, but that's about it. When you choose to play off-tilt, it's not just another table, it's your table. The same price gets you a fully custom-designed table that reflects your style and game. Off-tilt makes it easy to design a truly one-of-a-kind custom poker table that'll give you home table advantage 
advantage. Sure, Off Tilt could name their tables for marketing purposes, but why? It's not ours. We don't play on it. And to be honest, there are over a thousand named Off Tilt tables worldwide, including the WSOP, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour, the Jonathan Papelbon, as well as Julie's, Chris's, Scott's, Amber's, Tristan's, just to name a few. So let us add your name to the list and deliver a truly custom-crafted, furniture-quality poker table worthy of your game. Visit www.offtiltpokertables.com or call Brian Knott today at 262-490-3812. We'll show you why Off Tilt is the only way to play. Win your share of $50,000 in cash and prizes and get into the game for free with the Nevada Poker League. NPL has 17 locations in the Las Vegas area for you to play poker with your friends and neighbors. New season starts early October. Find a location near you at NevadaPokerLeague.com and get in the action tonight. Want to be a millionaire? Then see if you can become Fantasy Sports Royalty in the 2013 Fantasy Football Millionaire Grand Final at DraftKings.com. Play for free or in paid contests for real money, plus games last one day, so there's no long-term commitment. Thousands of winners have won over 10 million prizes on DraftKings.com, and now it's your turn to cash in. Go to DraftKings.com right now, enter the promo code HOPE, and get a 100% deposit bonus and a free entry into the Millionaire Grand Final Qualifier. So don't wait. Crown yourself the king of fantasy sports at DraftKings.com. Actually, that'd be kind of interesting. That's what we were Turn up the electricity on your computer by going to roguewire.com. News, sports, current events, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show, plus much more. Like us on Facebook and follow Roguewire on Twitter to stay up to date and let the sparks fly off your screen. Check it out, roguewire.com. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch on October 21st, 2013. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final Nine Comic.com. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable, so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus, it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. 
Plus, enter the discount code Mark Hoke Show when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, we're back, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Las Vegas. I'm here even sooner. I know. It, it, you, you get the FIBA. I'm, you get the FIBA. I'm trying to get a furnace installed back home, get it replaced, and out here, you're trying to get an air Yeah. Why am I living in Massachusetts again? I'm not sure. <laughs> We're going to get you out here soon. I, I've been uh, introducing myself as a future local, so. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. It's coming. I know it's coming. All right. Well, we are back, and uh, thank you for being with us here. And, of course, we are joined by Doug Hull, the author of Poker Plays You Can Use. Well, I love the hat. There has to be a story behind that hat. Uh, I call it my get called more hat. Um, I don't oh. think people take me quite as seriously when I'm wearing the hat, and I get called down a little bit more. Really? Yeah. Wow. Have you, have you tested that theory? Uh, no, it's like a lot of theories. It's better untested. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. But it is an awesome hat. I give you major points for that. Uh, thank you. Well, Doug, uh, now you've been out here in Las Vegas making the rounds and you know, saying hi to some people. Of course, you did that you know, really great lecture over there at Ricardo's. Uh, what's it been like for you out here in Las Vegas for this, this time around? Oh, um, as far as the cash games go, very well. Uh, making you know, the steady hourly out here and... Doing a little cross training, tried some Omaha eight limit. Hadn't really played that before. Doesn't get spread at Mohegan Sun, my normal card room. So mm -hmm. I wanted to give that a shot. Omaha eight limit. Oh, I bet that's fun. It's a it's a different game than than Hold'em, no doubt. I just figured tighter is righter and went with it. And when I, as a new player, could figure out who was the sucker at the table, I was like, all right, I'm doing all right. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you, know, you start bringing up a, a limit, mixed limit game like that because, you know, there are a lot of players out there that do enjoy getting away from No Limit Hold'em and playing something else. Uh, you know, what, to, what experiences what, that you've had at the tables would you give people if they're first maybe starting to get into playing Stud or Omaha or maybe just playing Limit Hold'em, for example? So what I end up doing is Super System has a little chapter on every one of these games, and you can figure out just basic, basic, tight strategy, what's a good starting hand. And I don't think you can go wrong learning a new game by being way too tight until you understand what the relative hand ranges are, what the hand values are. And I really didn't know when I started playing Omaha what are good hands. Mm -hmm. But... That's yeah. how I get into a new game. Yeah, I've, I found it interesting when we were when you were doing your lecture the other day, talking about getting a feel for players on the table and projecting images, and you know some different scenarios that you brought up. But you know, aside from the actual poker itself, what are some of the things that you would tell people when they first sit down at a table and maybe don't recognize some of these players to do as they're trying to make those proper assessments and make sure that they don't misjudge somebody. Okay, so let's say I've got a choice of tables, or I'm sorry, a choice of seats at the table. First thing in Hold'em I'm looking for is someone to protect my flank. I want two nitty guys to my left. I don't want them raising me, and I want to be able to steal blinds easier. Not that you ever really get a chance to steal blinds on, without a limper or two at the 2-5 games, but that, that's the first thing I'm looking for is someone to protect my flank there. The other thing I'm looking for is the big stacks. I want to get those to my right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those are the things I'm balancing. The next thing, if um, there's not an obvious place to choose based on that, I'm going to be looking to have position on the guys that look like they're the wild players. So and use whatever stereotypes you have about who's the wild player at a game. Yeah, I was going to say, so So if, if someone's maybe new out there that it, okay, so you tell them go look for the wild player. Define that a little bit more for somebody if they're they're not used to making that those assessments. Okay, um, well, certainly anyone that's got a drink in their hand 
that's that's going to help. I see a half finished <laughs> beer. That that's a good sign. Okay. Um, other things, it's pretty hard to get a really big stack in Hold'em, and so a lot of times the guy with a really big stack got really lucky because he's playing wilder. So you want the wild guys to your right, and you want the big stacks to your right. So both of those come in. You know, I, I found that sometimes when I've gone into a poker room and maybe sitting down at a one-two table or something like that, and I'll see somebody sitting there with twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, or fifteen hundred dollars. You know, that's the table that I'm kind of like. Eh, I don't know if I really want to get involved in that because these guys have just stacked it up, and I can only buy in for three hundred. Is that a misnomer? That is completely a misnomer. The short stack has a huge advantage over the big stack in a cash game. The idea that the big stacks can bully you around is a tournament concept that people misapply to cash games. Uh, the reason for that is big stacks can get in with much more speculative hands because they're playing against other speculative hands. But high card strength and high pair strength is so hard to overcome. If you've got a short stack and you own, you three bet with good solid hands even a, you know like a pair of jacks at queens if he's in there with eight nine suited that's great against the other big stacks mm -hmm. but against you he doesn't have those implied odds right he's got nowhere to go he's got nowhere to go yeah. no no implied odds and unfortunately or i guess fortunately for me and anyone else at the table most people don't play their short stack correctly if they were played it correctly which is basically super tight they would do a lot better. Yeah, I, th I think that when you, when you sit down with a short stack at a cash game table like that, sometimes you feel like you almost have to play some of those hands that maybe you wouldn't play sometimes to counteract those stacks. But, you know, you're saying do the opposite. Just, you know, tight, batten down the hatches and go. And, yep, and people always think that, well, people will notice and give me no action. Baloney. As an experiment, I sat down at a 1-2 table, minimum buy, 60 bucks. I sat there and I folded, I believe, 10 orbits straight. And wow. so that's, that's noticeable. People were complaining about how I never give action. And so I've bought back in, I've got, uh, or, you know, I up because I was down 30 just in paying the blinds. Mm -hmm. I'm under the gun with $40. I raise to 10, I get three callers. <laughs> right. Wow. Like, if they were just complaining about how tight I'm playing and I raise under the gun, what do you think I have? Exactly. Yeah. That, that's an auto fold. It should have been. It should have been. They, and there's no implied odds against me. And I had done this as an experiment to see what would happen, and no one folded. I, I tripled up. Wow. Pair, pair of kings and just shove it in on the flop boom 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 and they all call me that's awesome like what were they expecting boy you like to do some fun little tricks at the table don't you yeah you, you're, you're like a mad scientist out there well if i'm going to be writing about one two two five i've got to be playing those games mm -hmm. and so this book when i was was writing it i went back and played one two because i normally don't play that just to see, do these things really work? People complain that uh, one, two is no fold them, hold them. That is not right. It's because most people don't raise enough that the other players correctly call. If you come in there with some real raises, they will fold. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What, so what are some of the other crazy things that you've done at a table to try and, uh, you know, for research or to prove a point? Uh, let me think of... Um, Ah, uh, we when Wild Bills was around, that finally closed, didn't it? Yeah. There was a $0.50 cent dollar game, and this was an interesting study <laughs> in image. So my buddy and I just started drinking tequilas, and his gig was he would only go all in. Whatever he had, if he was playing, he was going all in. And because him and I were knocking back tequilas together, his image wore off on me, and they thought I was wild. Now, I was actually playing solid cards, but I was massively overbetting. Not all in, mm -hmm. just massively overbetting every time I had a hand. But I was playing the same exact kind of cards, just let's open for 15 big blinds. And <laughs> people thought that I didn't have anything when I did. So I thought it was cool that his image wore off on me. So what's that mean? Maybe 
when you're playing at your normal game something bigger and there's a drunk at the table what if you start buddying up with him you might start to take on his image and that's what i learned wow that that's a neat concept yeah that really is so so are there any other adaptations you like to make at tables in terms of uh, projecting an image you know one way or the other well, um, certainly, I think the hat is <laughs> um, is helpful. It, people don't take you quite as seriously when, when you're wearing a, a funny cowboy hat. Um, I'm not the most talkative guy at the tables, mm. so I wish I was better at that, but I'm not. I know some of my buddies can just really talk up a storm. Uh, one of the guys at Mohegan's Sun, I have seen him. He is a nit. He is an uber nit but he never shuts up at the table. He looks super loose, but he is the biggest nit I've ever seen, and he talks guys into calling him with ridiculous hands. Hmm. It's an amazing thing to see. Wow. You know, and, and speaking of that, you know, I, know, I had a gentleman on the show about, about five or six months ago that was talking to me about that he does two things at the table. I'm curious to get your reaction to it. The first was that he doesn't like playing high cards. He likes to just stay low. There's more low cards than high cards, you know. So he's actually playing nines and below mo the vast majority of the time. I didn't realize you you interviewed N Negranu. No, oh, no, it wasn't Daniel. Oh, okay. No, somebody, another another gentleman. But uh, you know, it was a very interesting tactic to to take to say, you know, I put my stress on playing the lower cards and playing the higher cards because of the fact that the odds are better than I'm going to hit. There is absolutely no truth to that mathematically. <laughs> absolutely was, none. Hold'em is a high card game. Now, if you are particularly skilled lag, you might be able to get away with it because you are so skilled post-flop. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the high card advantage in Hold'em is so hard to overcome. Now, the other thing he likes to do is he likes to show every hand, no matter what. I'm, show every hand. I'm sure he gets a lot more action because of that. Do you, do you think that's an advisable tactic? I can't pull it off, but if he can, good, good for him. Yeah, it's, it, it was a very interesting conversation. I was just I was curious to see where that would go with you. Uh, of course, uh, once again, we're on with Doug Hull, the author of Poker Plays You Can Use. It's a beautiful book right there. Something else, get it at threebarrelbluff.com. Put in KLAV, you're going to get 25% off, big score. And it's going to make you the money right back. Yep. Obviously, obviously. Tell everybody a little bit about the book. Uh, you know, When you put this together, how did you structure it? Uh, what makes it as special as it is? Okay, so a lot of people are calling this the sequel to Playing the Player by Ed Miller. Ed was my editor for this, so it's got some pretty high credentials that way. And what it is, is it documents the hands that I play differently now than I would have when I was an ABC player. When you think about it, most of your money comes from the bad players, but you can only win so much from the bad players because you have to have a hand. Now, where do you get the rest of the money? You get the, the rest of the money from the good players, or the ABC players, I should say. Mm. And unlike the bad players, their flaw is they fold too often. And so bluffing them is going to be a pretty good strategy. So 50% of the book is dedicated to bluffs. And if you can get them to lay down the best hand, that's good, but it also means that you are going to get paid off on your big hands. Mm -hmm. When Nitty McNitterson, the mayor of Nitville, <laughs> you know, only raises in three bets with aces, the way to exploit that, this man is to fold. But if he starts betting, even opening up his range by raising with ace king suited, now what are you gonna do? You can't, you can't fold to him every time he three bets because your queens might be ahead mm -hmm. or your kings might be ahead. So now you've got a few different ways you can make mistakes against Nitty. You can call incorrectly or you can fold incorrectly, whereas before you could only call incorrectly against Nitty. Mm -hmm. And so by opening up just a little bit, he is getting more value out of the rest of his hands. So you, you take that a little bit farther, and if you are in there like your friend that is playing the low side of the deck and showing it down, that people are going to realize, I can't fold to this guy. And then when he gets a sneaky monster, he's getting paid. Yeah, and you know, you got to, I got to hear a lot of you talking about a lot of the bluffs that you've made and some of the more interesting plays that you've pulled off. I mean, you're a maniac when it comes to these bluffs. I mean, wh where did that come from? How did you decide to develop that 
aspect of your game and then you know obviously then carry it over to the book um i did it because i needed to to get beyond the abc player um you you just can't make enough hands and hold them that you can win just by having the right hands mm -hmm. so i really learned where do you apply pressure against the other guys whether it's semi bluffs whether it is just flat out bluffs there's two kinds of bluffs out there. There is the storytelling bluff, which a lot of us think about. Like, when you, if you were to ask the player that folds to your bluff, what do you think I had? He's going to say, oh, I thought you had the nut flush, or I thought you had the straight, or something obvious. And that is a storytelling bluff. Now, the other kind of bluff is just realizing that their hand range is really, really weak. Mm -hmm. And if you know it's weak, then you can put pressure on them. And they're not necessarily going to think about what hand you have. They're going to be thinking about what hand they have and just, well, this clearly can't be good, and they'll toss it. Uh, sometimes you can even bluff with what would be an absolutely empty range. And if the guy is scared money and won't call, go for it. Mm -hmm. I just won a $1,500 pot because this kid, I knew he was scared money. He check raised, he barreled the turn, and then he gave up on the river. And I just knew he was never calling $500. It was probably his rent money on the table. So I put it in. If he had thought about it, he should have called me with ace high, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Wow. And there we go. There you go. Yeah, you know, one, one part of the game that I think people are overlooking, you know, it, it used to be a pre-flop game, then it turned into a flop game. But now I think where people make a lot of their mistakes or betting is on the turn. I think you see a lot of people that, you know, will put on the brakes on the turn after they, you know, they, you know, they, they, they'll raise pre-flop, they'll do their C-bet, and then they get to the turn and have no clue what to do. Uh, what are some tips that you give players when they're playing through a hand, when they get to the turn and things aren't maybe going the way they want it to? Uh, how do you help them get through that? Okay, so there, there's a few things here. Uh, j when you start getting really comfortable making the C bet, then the natural extension of that is going to be the second barrel. And you, if you start getting very comfortable with the fact that, yes, I'm going to have to do a continuation bet, reading the board texture and realizing when a second barrel is appropriate. When is a second barrel appropriate? Let's say it comes down jack high, you C bet. When I say C bet, I mean C bet because you have nothing but you raise preflop, so you keep going. Let's say it's jack seven two. There's nothing realistic that they have there other than top pair. It's not like they have any straight draws or flush draws. Mm -hmm. So when they call you, they probably have an under pair or like jacks. Well, what happens when the king rolls off? That pair of jacks is probably not feeling real comfortable. And so that's a great place to put in a continuation bet. And it, it gets scary because you are barreling with nothing, but so is he. So if you're in position, give it a shot. You'll, be, you'll surprise yourself. Is the C-bet overrated? No. Uh, continuation betting is essential. You just can't win enough hands by making hands and hold them. So if you think about it, over pair or top pair is always in your range if you are the pre-flop raiser. No matter what happens, you could always have that because you could have aces, you could have ace king or what have you. And so they are going to have to have to call you knowing that that's in your range. And so I think it is important to put it out there. I surprise myself sometimes when I throw out a C bet there and I'm like, they can't fold again. And they do. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what is What are some of the favorite advanced tactics that, that you have in the book uh, that you were really proud to get out there? I mean, because obviously there's so many different plays in there, but, uh, you know, there's some pretty intense stuff in there for people that aren't used to making those higher, those higher level plays. Okay. So one of my favorites is let's say you flop top two on a very straighty, flushy board, okay? This can be very scary when you bet this out on the flop because if you get called on, on this kind of hand, just about half the deck is going to complete one of those draws. And 
how are you going to play that? So let's say you're out of position in something like that. And I actually have a hand in the book about this because I was the guy in position on that kind of board. So he bets I float him with one of the draws, but he doesn't know which one. Mm -hmm. Now I get half the deck as either real outs or bluffing outs. And he got himself into trouble. He bet the flop, I flatted, and then one of the scary cards comes out. He makes a blocking bet, meaning a way too small bet for that pot. And I recognize that as a bet fold. He didn't know what to do on the flop because a draw came in. He knows that if he checks, that I'm probably gonna bluff him off of it. Mm -hmm. So he names his price. This isn't price line, you can't do that. <laughs> and so then when he makes that small blocking bet, the bet for information, whenever someone does that to me, the answer is you should fold. So I raise them. Nice. And so if you look at that hand, he's on the turn, he has no good options. He checks, he's gonna get bluffed. If he bets, I'm gonna play perfectly because if I've got it, I'm gonna call. If not, I'll just fold so I can play perfectly against him. His mistake or his opportunity was on the flop. With, um, with his hand, he wishes he had a really short stack. Right. How do you get a really short stack on the flop? You check and then raise if you need to. If he had done that to me, I'm in a, I'm in a world of hurt. Yeah. If I've, I bet my draw and he comes over the top, draws like really deep stacks. He has suddenly made this not deep stacks at all. And I don't have any good options there. Let's say I don't bet my draw. He can then just check call, check call all the way down, and he would get to showdown with a very nice hand. Mm -hmm. Whereas the way he did it in the actual game, he built a pot and abandoned it. So I thought that was a, a great move. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I'm pulling that one out. That's yep. nice. I, you know, I, one thing that I have seen a trend over the past couple of years is, you know, it used to be that when someone would be over betting. It was a bluff. And when someone put that small value bet out, you know, they were trying to get the call. But more and more, I think we're seeing players flip that almost, where they're using that over bet as an opportunity to try and draw that as, you know, kind of a bluff play. Where, where do you see that on the tables right now with, you know, reversing those roles? So I think there's a culture to any region of the country. I've played in a lot of different regions, and I think they all have their own peculiarities. So I think once you get in tune to what an overbet means in Vegas versus East Coast versus California, you can start to play with that. A lot of bluffs are actually emulating the standard lines with the opposite of what that normally means. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, what, well, tell everybody a little bit about, you know, the, the traits that players maybe have in Las Vegas as opposed to what they have in California, the Northeast, or the Southeast. The one that strikes me in Vegas the most is people slow play their big pairs so often here. Before I got used to that, I would get stacked so often because I'm like, he, could, he flatted five people. He can't possibly have aces. Well, yeah, yes, he can. Uh, so I've been surprised by the number of people that are willing to slow play uh, big pocket pairs out here. Maybe that's because a lot of these guys are playing against tourists and are looking for the big score with the unexpected hand. I'm not sure why they do it. I don't think it's a very good play myself. I don't either. Um, I like aces. They're my favorite hand. I like to build a pot immediately with them. Yeah, because you know one of the one of the tips of the day that you do on the show on KLAV, you know, talked about that that no matter what you're raising every time, that you know, don't be a limper, get away from that, and you know, some players like to try to do that. They'll limp in with you know with aces or kings to to supposedly disguise them, but that more often than not creates trouble than success. It's yeah, it's not a disguise. It's announcing your hand. If anything, um, I will sometimes limp in under the gun with something like ace four suited just to put that play on because it almost never works a guy was under the gun he limped three people called someone raised and then under the gun re-raises every everyone knows that's aces and so if i've got a nice blocker ace with a suited hand i'll give that a shot interesting yeah that's a neat little play too 
Boy, you got just got all the little tricks of the book, don't you? Yeah, I try. It, and you know what I really like about about you, Doug, is when you start talking about these things, you get that devilish little grin on your face. <laughs> you are you are just like a little a little Satan sitting there at the table, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> Look at that. He's just like, yep. You <laughs> bet. You bet. Well, what's been? I know the book's been out for a while. What's been the reaction to it? And and where are we with a sequel? Uh, the sequel. I'm about fifty pages in right now. And so I'm trying to get that done for the World Series next year. If you're going to launch a book right before Christmas and right before the World Series is the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm on track to get this one out by next year. We will see if it actually gets done. But that, that's the goal. I've got a few other projects that are keeping me busy also. So it's tough to get enough time with a full-time regular 9 to 5 to get everything done I want in the poker world. Yeah, you're an engineer by trade. I am. That, that explains some of the low-key demeanor. I know the engineers, but you guys are wild behind the scenes. I know that, too. Am I right? So you, you've been to an engineering school. We... Oh, I was. Yeah, I hang out with the engineers and the architects. Yep. I know how you guys operate. You're, you are sneaky bad. Sneaky bad. Wow, thank you. Yeah. So uh, what what are some of the fun things you get you like to do when you're out here in Vegas? I mean, you know, we're, you know, we're talking about the book so much, but let's talk a little bit about you. What, uh, what gets you rolling out here in Las Vegas? Honestly, I come out here and I just play cards till I drop. Yeah. I really don't do much else when I'm out here. Now, there's got to be something here you like other than poker. Oh, you would think so. <laughs> <laughs> you would think so, but no, I really just play cards. Um, during the World Series, when I was awake, I was playing. Um, it was amazing that... Like at the end of the World Series when I was out here, I was like, why is my index finger sore? And it was from folding and folding and folding wow. all day for two weeks straight. Wow, that is something. Very cool. Well, you know what, what we're going to have to do is we'll, we'll get you out to a strip club. All right. And we'll figure something out. Honey, we got to take Doug to the Sapphire. Or Crazy Horse or, you know, one of the many other fantastic adult entertainment facilities here in Las Vegas. I don't want to leave anybody out, so sorry about that, guys. Free plugs for a couple people. All but, right. Uh, but but Doug's, Doug's ready to go. So, well, I tell you what. I mean, this book is fantastic, and once again, you guys, pick it up today. 25% off with the code KLAV. Just go to 3BarrelBluff.com and buy the book. And check out the website, too. you got a lot of great, great information on the site as well. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I try and update it as often as possible. And a newsletter, by the way, that you just started. I should don't want to forget to mention that. Yeah, I am trying to get into the publishing industry. I've just uh, struck a deal with a lot of the local casinos. That's part of the reason I'm out here. And they'll be carrying what's called the free roll. It's a poker strategy newsletter. And it should be coming out every month. You can pick it up. If it's not carried by your local Vegas casino, uh, please contact me. And I would love to help get it out there. I'll help you out with that, too. All right. All got, yeah, I mean, you don't even have to ask. I'll give you a hand on that. I'll make the routes for you. Yeah, I mean, Doug, I'll tell you what, man. It is good to see the progress you've been making. It's very exciting. I mean, you know, we got to meet at the World Series this year, and, you know, I'm glad we did. I mean, it's been a, a great friendship so far and, and business relationship yep. as well. I'm looking forward to everybody growing together. It's well, I, cool. see, I see you coming up through the ranks yourself. I mean, you've got so many shows. I don't know how you find something to talk about in – what are you doing, 10 shows a week now? It feels like it. Yeah. It's only going to get worse, too. But it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, well, we have great guys like you on the show, so. Well, thanks for having me. Keeps it moving, man. I, I will not ask to wear the hat, by the way. <laughs> that, that is all <laughs> Wouldn't yours. Wouldn't fit over the uh, headphones anyway. Yeah, it might not. But but I, I'm going to go crazy hat next time I go play some poker. I'm going to test that out. Yeah, you'll get called more. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to it. All right. All right, Doug. Well, hey, thanks a lot. And, uh, well, we're going to take a break, and uh, we should be getting close to tournament time. And, uh, you know, we'll hang out. And then we got Christina Kwan flying around out there. Uh, Ms. West is out there as well, the uh, current, one of the current women boxing champions of the world. You going to take her on, Doug? I, I was told that she will kick my ass for free if, if I ask. Wow. So. Oh, my God. And we've got a camera. Get her in here. Let's go. All right. Well, Doug, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll yeah, we'll talk to you on the other side of the break, I'm sure. All right. Sounds Thank you. Good. Thank you, Doug. All right. Let's take a break here on the Mark Hoke Show. We will be right back. We've got our tournament going on. We've got the, all sorts of crazy people flying around this wonderful facility. i got to get Vinny on the show sometime, too. Vinny, Vinny always dodges the camera. 
or dodges the mic, but I, I think tonight's the night. All right. Tonight's the night. All right, so stick around, everybody. We will be right back. Poker is more fun when you win. Most yeah, poker books are too like theoretical. You they tell you to be more aggressive, but give few practical examples. Poker Plays You Can Use by Doug Hull, edited by Ed Miller, has 49 concepts with multiple clear examples from real, live, 1, 2 through 5, 10 games. Each hand is visually represented, explaining which players are vulnerable to these moves. Use discount code KLAV at 3BarrelBluff.com to get 25% off your copy. Paper and ebook available. At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Nine poker players on a dramatic path to glory with unbelievable twists and turns that will keep you on the edge of your seat. It's the Final Nine comic from Room 110 Publishing. Go to Final, the number nine, comic.com to download the first issue preview and get ready for the official launch on October 21st, 2013. Nine will become one, one way or another. Final Nine Comic.com. One man, his lucky shirt, an unforgettable night and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Turn up the electricity on your computer by going to roguewire.com. News, sports, current events, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show, plus much more. Like us on Facebook and follow RogueWire on Twitter to stay up to date and let the sparks fly off your screen. Check it out, RogueWire.com. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? Last summer, I was at the World Series of Poker every day and couldn't walk two steps without seeing someone wearing three-bet clothing. It's super comfortable and stylish, and all their stuff looks amazing. The incredible team of pros who wear three-bet hats, hoodies, tees, and more are a who's who in poker. All-time greats like Jonathan Little, Doc Sands, Brian Rast, Jason Kuhn, Scott Clements, Greg Mueller, Ben Tolerine, Jeff Gross, and, of course, Antonio Esfandiari, all proudly wearing the three-bet brand. They wear three-bet clothing because they know that being comfortable and feeling confident is crucial to winning on and off the tables. 3bet.com has shipped thousands of orders worldwide, and it's time for you to join the three-bet team just like the pros. Go to the number 3bet.com and receive an added bonus of 15% off with the promo code RADIO. Make that right call. Look and feel like a pro at 3bet.com.
Let's return to the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Wow, I fell asleep at the switch there a little bit. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> That's my bad. Doug is relaxed back here now. Look at, look at this guy. Sitting there in a Fox Switch sweatshirt. At this store, uh, getting a super uh, playing a yellow turtle. And I got a royal flush down there. Wow, a royal flush. Yeah, I was looking around and I turned the, the gutter ball to get it. So Very nice. Yeah. You know, move a little closer to the mic, though. Just sit. There All right, not not I so know. relaxed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah you. But but it was cool. I'm glad you were. See, see, that's the power I have on the show. Just make everybody kind of chill out. All right, good, you know? good. It's. I understand good. we got a tournament going on. We do. We're gonna get this thing rolling here shortly. Let's see where we got. Uh, yeah, two minutes. We're gonna play some horse. Okay. Giddy up. I'm gonna hop in and I'll cover my cards up. So we'll have that starting here, and we are gonna give away a copy of. Another outstanding book, The Mental Game of Poker by Jared Tendler. Uh-huh. I'm working my way through that right now. It's it's a, you know, obviously, you know, Jared's been on the show a bunch of times and, you know, always likes throwing some stuff our way, so and it's quality. All right. We'll put it, put those two books right next to each other on the bookshelf. And Good. They can have at it. So, by the way, uh, don't forget Wednesday on the KLAV show. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my daughter just made me laugh over there. Uh, the KLAV show, it is Mike Matisau. Coming up on Wednesday. You get all the big names out here. We we do our best. We do our best. But Mike Matisau will be joining us on Wednesday at 11 a.m. You can either tune in here in Las Vegas or go to klav1230am.com. It's going to be a hoot. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Mike always scares me when he gets on a mic. Do you, um, do you have the 10-second delay in the, the beeper? Or? I'm sure they do. I will tell my producer, Tim, to finger on the button hit that dump button as fast as possible you know how mike always greets me on the show by the way whenever yeah. i do an interview with him or he says hi to me what do you say he usually says fuck off <laughs> uh, we're on the internet now yes can we tell. can do that okay but yeah that that's mike's greeting for me it's it's very special i feel good about it you're not gonna sit in on this tournament are you? i am gonna sit in I am going to sit in. I'm going to. So you're like defending your book. Is that is that the situation? No, or? I'll still give the book away. After I win, I'll I'll pick somebody else. You know, maybe whoever finishes second. All right. So second place is going to win it. Yeah, absolutely. 